we'll just catch up so before we start today's class is there any question concerning what we have been learning for the past two days if you have a question please raise your hand and uh, ask and mute your mic and ask You can ask a question before we can start in a few. So um, since there is no question, we can begin. And I hope everyone has loaded their Excel file. And you can start so today's lesson we want to discuss about excel tables so um there's a sheet about excel tables click on it that is the only sheet we'll be using for today so an excel table can be used to make Managing and analyzing related data or data with multiple columns or rows easier. And uh, Excel tables is a fundamental concept while analyzing our data in Excel. So we should begin in today's classes. In today's class, and to begin. I want to create an Excel table on our data on my screen. And to do that, I'll click one of my cell here and press Ctrl A to select all of my data. And on my home tab, to my right, under the style section, next to the conditional formatting there's a format as a table has everyone seen that on my home tab to my extreme right there's a format as a table um you can click on it you can click on that and you can see some tables that have popped up and you can click one of them a pop-up pop has come up saying create a table and make sure that my table as header section has been clicked and say ok and now we have created our excel table is everyone following? You can ask a question if you are stuck. Okay, let me undo. So to create our table, our Excel table, our first step is to select all of our data. And to do that, press on your keyboard, Control plus A to select all of our data and in our home tab uh, to our right on the style section next to our condition of formatting there is a button that says format as a table click on it and there's some um, tables that are, are showing click on one of them And a pop-up comes, create a table. Um, it says where well, is the data for your table, and it is selected. And check if your data is uh, headers. Make sure that that check box is clicked, and say OK. And now we have created our Excel table. A question, Stella. 
Okay, so let me repeat for those who are not getting me well. Am I audible? Am I audible? Emmanuel, excuse me. Okay, so there are some people who are still joining us, and I will start again. So, um, first of all, we want to select all of our data, and to do that, press Control plus A to select all of our data, and then head to our Home tab, and to our right, to the Style section, next to the Condition of Formatting, there is a Format as a Table. Click on it, and there are some tables that shows up. Select one of them. Another pop-up comes up. Make sure you have clicked on the My Table as Headers, and say OK. And now we have created our Excel table. Are we together? Has everyone done that? Stella, is that clear? Yeah. Okay, so that is one method of creating a, an Excel table. And I can show you a shortcut. So everyone can undo what they have done by pressing Ctrl plus Z. And uh, a shorter method of uh, creating our Excel table, press Ctrl A to select all of our data. And then press Ctrl T to create our Excel table. The pop-up comes again. Say OK. And that is another short method of creating a, an Excel table. Has everyone understood that? Yes, that is a, another shorter way of creating a table and a quicker way. So, as soon as uh, we have created our Excel table, we see that an additional tab on the ribbon has been included called Table Design. And I want everybody to click on it. Click on that Table Design tab that has, an, that has appeared immediately after we have created our design table, uh, our Excel table, pardon. So, has everyone done that? So, clicking on that tab, we can see, uh, we can look at some of the elements of, uh, of this Excel table. And the first thing we can do with our Excel table is to rename the table, provide it with a name. And on our, ex uh, uh, on our extreme left, there is a table name. That's where we will rename our table. Um, has everyone seen it? I hope everyone has seen it. And now we can rename our table. And, and the name that I want to name our Excel table is student grades. Let's type student grades. And I, I want everybody to observe what happens when I press enter. There's a warning that comes up that says the syntax 
of this name isn't correct verify that name and make sure that uh, your name starts with a letter or an underscore we should not include spaces or characters that are not allowed and make sure that your excel tables name does not conflict with your excel sheet name has everyone seen that um to correct that we will add an underscore to our excel table so i'll say i'll put the table name as student 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 underscore grades and now that name is uh, is accepted has everyone done that is there a question up to there if you have a question you can unmute your mic and ask your question so we can see some benefits of using our excel table if you scroll down on our excel table we see that our headers are frozen so that is one of the benefits of an excel table has everyone done that when we scroll down our excel table our headers are frozen that is uh, one of the benefits of an excel table so um so within our table headers here we can sort and filter our data so if you remember on our day one we talked about sorting and filtering so if you click on that drop down um it can help you to sort and filter your data so on our excel table is there a question up to there ronnie do you have a question or are you stuck no okay so we can continue um so on the excel table we have banded rows which makes our data easier to read so our banded rows are these alternating colors between each row so there's an alternating color there is blue white blue white until the end of our excel table that's what we're calling uh, banded rows are we together up to there If you have a question you can unmute your mic and ask so another benefit of an excel table is automatic table expansion um what do i mean when i say automatic table expansion so um when you want to add new information to our table our table expands automatically to include that information and i will demonstrate i will include a new row uh, sorry i will include a new column and let's name it year so everybody should type that so and i'll input a formula i'll start with these equals and input our year uh, we are in 2023 when i press enter the the year populates down automatically and our table also expands to include the year column are we together up to there so in addition to including a a column we can include a row so so um scrolling to the side there's a there's some some data here so is there somebody the question emmanuel 
We have um, we are I included the year. Manuel? Yeah. Yeah, 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 the part when you the Okay, so I'll just undo that to demonstrate. Control Z. So I wanted to include uh, a column and I want to name it here. So I'll type here when I press enter, our Excel table expands. And I want to include some data on this year column. So I'll press is equals and uh, input our current year, 2023, and press enter. And our data populates automatically. So are we clear, Manuel? Yeah, thank, thank you. you. OK. So in addition to adding a column, we can add a row. So you can scroll to the side with some data that are included here. You can see on my screen the data I'm referring to. And I want to select all this data and cut it. To cut on your keyboard, say Control X. Has everyone done that? I hope so. And um, scrolling down to our Excel table, we want to include that particular row and click Control V, Control plus V to paste. And our Excel table has expanded to include that information. Are we together, everyone? So I hope everyone has done that. So back to our table design tab on the ribbon. And to, if you want that design tab to appear on your ribbon, just click on your, on your Excel table and it will appear. So clicking on it, we have a styles option section here. I hope everyone has seen it. Has everyone seen that section? I hope so. So let's continue. And on that section, I want to click on total rows. I want to click on total rows. And we have included a tot uh, another row down here on our Excel table. Has everyone done that? Um, okay. So let's go to our office hours participated column. And if I clicked on total rows at the bottom, there's a drop down here on that column. Clicking on it, we can see there are various options that can help that can help us to do our mathematics. So there's a is there a question? Wisdom, ask your question. Pardon? Repeat the steps to point of cutting the data to the table. Oh, for including the columns and the row? Yes. Okay, I'll just do that. I will go back up to where I included the 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 year column. So um to include a column, um I wanted to include a year column, so I'll type year and press enter and our table has expanded. So to add to add data to that column, I will write is equals and input our current year, which is twenty twenty three or any year of your liking and press enter and we have added some data to our to our column named here 
So in addition to adding columns on our Excel table, we can add a row. And um, scrolling to the side, there's a row here. Hope you can see it. I'm highlighting it using my cursor. I want to cut it. So first of all, select it. On your keyboard, press Ctrl X to cut. Ctrl X is the shortcut for cutting. And on our Excel table, scroll down so that you can include that row. And press Ctrl V to paste. And our table, Excel table, has expanded. So is that clear wisdom? Yes, it's clear. Okay. So, back to our table design. And I had clicked on the total row here on our table style option section. So clicking on the total row, uh, there's a row that includes here. And I want to concentrate on our office participated column. So I'll click on that space. On the side, there's a drop down. Click on it. And we have some option here. We can click on average, count, count numbers, maximum, mean, some standard deviation and variance so for example i want to calculate our average to click on it it automatically gives me the average of the office hour participated column so are we clear up to there if you have a question please unmute your mic and ask your question before we proceed on that part. Okay. Let me undo. So, on our table design tab, there's a section here called table style options. I hope you have spotted it. And I want you to click on total rows. Total row. And uh, another row has been included here. I have highlighted it. And I want to concentrate on our office participated column. So click on that cell. There, there is a drop down here. And you can see we have some options that we can click on. There's an average option, count option, count numbers, maximum, minimum, some standard deviation, and uh, variance. So, for example, I want us to calculate our average, and I'll click on that, and it gives me my average. Is that clear? Is that clear? You can ask, you can ask a question, Wisdom. Ask. Okay, at my at my design, my is still. It's not Is everyone uh, encountering that problem? Make sure that checkbox is clicked on. You can see mine is going on and off, on and off. Is there anybody with the same problem? So mine is clicking on and off, on and off. So check on yours. Have you been able to, to do it? Have you been able to do it? So I think maybe there's a there's an issue. There's an issue with viewers. 
so everyone comment on your on the messages if you have been able to to do that step please comment comment so i think on your side there's an issue or maybe you should check on that so mine are, i can be able to click it and click it and it's still showing up so mama is saying i repeat the process and i'll gladly do that so to add the total row go to your table design tab and, and on the table style option click on total rows you can click on total rows and since we wanted to concentrate on our office hours participated click on that cell and there is a drop down that gives you um various option to choose from and for example i wanted us to to calculate the average so we'll click on the average and we get the average is that clear moema yes so the one who was asking uh, about the total row have you been able to to solve your issue i can give you the yes, it's, clear. it's clear okay thank you david so we can proceed so when i click on our results here and on our formula bar we can see the type of formula that has been used to calculate our average and that is the subtotal has everybody been able to see that so that is the formula that has been used so there is a code here don't worry about it that's 101 don't worry about it and if you want to know more about it you can google it and you can see we are we are referencing our office hours participated column from our formula bar here so if that is clear we can continue so if we go back to the table style style option so we have different types of formatting option so i can click on the first column clicking on that highlights my first column clicking on that highlights my first column as you can see there uh, I also want to click on the last column, so let me click on it. Clicking on it highlights my last column. And I, I, I want to hide my filter button, and I will unclick this, and, and it will remove the filter option on our, on our headers here. If I want to return them back, I can unclick, I can click back, and the drop downs reappear so there's also an option on banded columns so if i click on it and then click my banded rows you can see i have banded my columns and banding my columns i just create some visuals some alternating visuals so you see we are alternating blue white blue white that's what i mean by banding so on my side i always prefer banding my rows so i'll, I'll unclick on my banded columns and i'll band my rows so is that clear a question you can unmute your mic and ask a question before we proceed Okay, 
So if I want to, to band my columns, first of all, I will unclick the banded rows and click on the banded columns. And as you can see on my screen, my rows, uh, sorry, my columns are banded. The colors are alternating to blue, white, blue, white, blue, white to the end. Is that clear? Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. So, as I have said, on my side, I prefer my Excel table with banded rows. So, I'll just click on the banded rows and then click on the banded columns. So, last but not least, we can change the appearance of our Excel table. And to do that, we can go to our table styles option here. And we can click on what color we want our Excel table to display. So, there is... Is there a question? Is there a question? So, as I was saying, we can change the appearance of our Excel table. And to do this, you can go to the table style section here and click on the color we want our Excel table to appear. So, we can select light green or black or blue or orange. It all depends. It all depends with your preference of how you want your, your Excel table to appear. So if I click here, you see there are very many designs that you can use. And you can use according to your preference, known as uh, limited you. So I prefer, my, I prefer mine being blue, so I'll change it to blue. Is there a question up to there? If you have a question, you can ask. Ronnie, are you okay? Sarah? Sarah, are you yes. okay? Devox, Devox, are you okay? Okay, so the silence, I'll assume that all is okay. And we can move to another concept called um, calculated columns on our Excel table. So, a key benefit of using Excel tables are calculated columns. And uh, as we saw here, on our, Excel, on our year column, we calculated uh, the present year by inputting is equals 2023. And the formula automatically filled downwards. And I want to demonstrate that concept again. And next to our year column, I want all of us to write another column and name it Tuition Increase. Our Excel table expands to include that column. And I want us to I want us to calculate an increase in our tuition. And I can I can put down a formula here, and uh, as I've always been saying, to write a formula, you start with an is equal sign, click on the tuition column, and I want to increase our tuition by, say, 1.1, so I will multiply it with 1.1, and I'll press enter, and my formula has populated downwards so has everyone been able to do that so i will undo and repeat what i've just said we want to include another column called a uh, tuition increase And I will type our column name. 
called tuition increase presenter and our excel table expands and i will input a formula and to begin a formula you start with an is equal sign and i want to increase my my tuition and multiply it with one one point one press enter and my formula updates downwards so are we clear up to there so alvin alvo you can unmute your mic and ask a question where have you not understood unmute your mic and ask a question so i will repeat again i'll just undo what i've done and the first step was to type my column header which i said is tuition increase although i hope you are following so when i press enter my excel table expands and i can now input my formula i want to increase the tuition or rather the tuition with 1.1 and i'll multiply that with 1.1 pressing enter our formula populates automatically downwards is that clear alvo yes thank you um one thing we might have noticed is when we reference our tuition column right here we see some some squared brackets and a uh, at sign and i will explain what those those symbol means so for a squared bracket it means that you are making a structured reference to us uh, to our specific column in our excel table and the column was our tuition column i will repeat the squared brackets means that you are making a structured reference to a specific column in our excel table and the column in the column that you are talking about here is the tuition column the at symbol means we are only referencing a single row of the table for our formula we are referencing this single row here see my cursor i have placed my cursor on that cell we are referencing that row so that so those symbols those are the meaning of those symbols so is there a question up to there you can unmute your mic and uh, ask a question if you have not understood if you have understood you can uh, comment on the messages and say yes so i want to create a new column right here next to our tuition increase and i will name that column extra attendance i want everybody to to write that our new column is called extra attendance um alvin i want you to unmute your mic so that you can ask your question we have not understood before i can proceed with the extra attendance column okay, okay this, this is one last part to quite go um, um the, the one, one that you said about the referencing the symbol i didn't quite get the part okay the for the column i have so so the at sign i think you mean the at sign so the at sign means we are only referencing a single row and that row is the row this cell here this caroya in our tuition column 
a weekly alvin yes, yes we are. yeah so the at sign reference our row and the squared brackets um references our column i hope that is okay so back to our extra attendance column here i want us to sum our office hour participated to our tutorials attended i want to sum our office hour participated with our tutorials attended and to do that i will use the sum function so i will start with an is equal sign type sum so click on it and i want to sum our office hour participated place a comma and i want to sum it to our tutorials attended and uh, make sure you close the parenthesis to our formula and hit enter and our formula populates downwards automatically has everyone been able to do that or am i going too fast uh, oh you want to type you can type the formula we are using the sum function to add the office hour participated to our tutorials attended and to do that we'll use our sum function have you been able to do that so if you have been able to do that please comment on the messages and if you have a question please unmute your mic and ask your question before we proceed uh, Daniel, uh -huh. my, Excel, my Excel table isn't expanding. I don't know where the problem is. Um, can you share your screen? Can you please share your screen? I'll stop sharing mine. I want you to share yours. Uh, Martin. Martin, I'll get back to you in a few. Share your screen so that you are, I may help you. I'm no. not, uh, I'm not, my laptop is full. Oh, I cannot see clearly. So I'll just go back to. I cannot see it clearly. Maybe you can just ask your question and mute your mic and ask your question. Uh, my, the, the, the part which uh, we are supposed to put a new command, command it increases automatically, it isn't increasing the uh, table. So to fit, maybe as showing uh, the extra agenda. Um, just let me go back. And I'll just delete this column header here. So the first step, um, you can just input your column header. Mine was extra attendance. So after typing that, just hit enter. And our Excel table has expanded. Have you done that? Have you done that? Yeah. It's okay now. It's okay now. So, yeah. okay, good. So, Martin, I will repeat the, the formula for summing up the extra attendance. And I wanted to sum, I wanted to sum our office hour, hours participated to our tutorials attended. And to do that, I will use the sum function 
So I'll type in sum. I'll type in sum here. Click on uh, the office our participated. Place a comma. Click on the tutorials attended. Make sure you have closed the parentheses and hit enter. And our function, or rather our formula, has populated down automatically. So is that clear, Martin? So I hope so. I hope the formula is clear and we can proceed. Um, we can also use conditional logic in our Excel tables. So we want to create another column here and we can name it attendance. We can name it attendance. So I'll click on that. Our uh, Excel table has expanded again automatically and I can input say I want to use the if statement I want to say if a student has, has skipped less than five classes I want to give him an award if the student has skipped more than five classes the student will not receive an award and I'll input that using the if statement and I will demonstrate here on my attendance column. Is there a question? Yes, yes Eric. It brings Hash value. Then you have not put your formula well. I have clicked on that cell. You can see my my formula here. I can highlight it. You can type it again well. It is sum. And then click on the office hour participated. Place a comma. And then click on the tutorials attended. And then make sure you have closed the parentheses. Okay. Have you been able to do that? Let me try it. Yeah, please try it. We are using the sum function. Open our parentheses. Click on the office hour participated. Place a comma. Click on the tutorials attended. And close the parentheses. And hit enter. And with that, your function will work. Have you been able to do that? Um, for the rest, if you have been able to do that, please comment on the messages. If you have been able to do that, please comment on the messages. Fine. It's fine. Okay, good. Yes, yes. So, as I was saying, before I was uh, interrupted by a question, as I was saying, we can also use conditional logic in, ex in Excel tables. And uh, we have created a, an extra column there and we have named it attendance. And now we can define our formula. So the if logic formula that I wanted to use, sorry, the logic formula that I wanted to use is the if statement. And I want to test if the student who skipped less than five classes will give those students an award. Those who skipped more than five classes, there will be no award. And I will input the formula. So since I'm using the if statement, I'll use the if statement. And our logical test, we're using the classes skipped. And if the classes skipped are less than five comma we issue out an award open the quotation marks and write award so otherwise if the classes skipped are above five will not issue out an award so we'll, we'll write no 
a word. Again, make sure you have closed the parentheses and hit enter. There's an error. And the error is here. I had uh, indicated an extra quotation mark and I'll hit enter and my formula is corrected. So where the class where the student has skipped five classes or more, no award. And those who have uh, skipped uh, less than five, they will receive an award. So Emmanuel is saying I repeat. And I'll repeat. So this is the if statement we were using in our first class. We are just doing some revision. And I'll just repeat for, for revision purposes. I will say is equals. And I will type my if. Click on it. And we want to test uh, if a student has skipped less than five classes five classes we put our comma in our formula open the quotation marks we want to give the student an award comma otherwise if the students have skipped more than five classes we should not issue them with a, an award so i'll write no a word. Make sure you have closed those parentheses and click enter and our formula has populated down automatically. So is that clear Emmanuel? If you have a question please unmute your mic and ask. So we are just doing some revision on the if statement and now we can use it on our excel tables. Is there a question? So if you have been able to do that step, please comment in the messages. You can please comment on the messages. And if you are stuck somewhere, you can unmute your mic and ask a question. So with no further question, let's continue. So I can also look up additional data to expand the information in our table. And to do that, I will include another column here. And I want to name that column department. So type in department as our new column. Hit enter. And our Excel table has expanded. I hope everyone does not have a problem expanding our our Excel table up to now. I hope no one has uh, that problem. And in our new our new column here named Department, we want to to use the VLOOKUP to look up for the additional data. So yesterday we tackled about VLOOKUP, so we'll just do some revision. So I'll type in is equals and type VLOOKUP, click on it. So our lookup value, we want to look up the faculty. So I'll move across and click on the faculty. So that's our lookup value. Press comma. So for a table array, there's a table here next. That is the table that we want to use. I hope everyone can see it. That is the table array that we want to use. And we should select it. So drag that up to there. Press another comma. Our next parameter is our column index. And uh, to review, yesterday I said our column index starts from 1. And then two, three, so and so. So for our department, since we want to return our departments, or rather we want to look up uh, our department, 
our column index is 2. So I'll write 2. Then another comma. And you want to return an exact match. So I will say false. And make sure um, you have closed the parentheses and click enter. And our formula has populated. So Alvin, Alvo, have you, have you been able to do that? We are just doing a revision uh, about VLOOKUP and now we can use it in our Excel table. I will undo that. Okay, I will undo that and repeat. I'll just repeat from the beginning. So type an is equal sign and type VLOOKUP. So the lookup value that you want to use is our faculty. So just scroll to the side and the faculty is here. Click on it. Is there a question? So I'll, I'll continue. Our lookup value is the faculty. Place a comma there. And uh, there's some, some data here to the side. That is our table array. That is what we want to use as our table array. So I will select it. And make sure you have not selected the headers. Select that table array. Place a column. The next parameter is our column index. And our, the column index for our department is 2. So write 2. Place a comma. And the next is the range lookup. And you want to return an exact match. So we click on false. And make sure you have closed the parentheses. Hit enter. And our formula has updated down automatically. Um, is there a question? Is there a question? Is there a qu is everybody has everybody been able to do, to do that? Pardon again, please. Okay, I'll just repeat. No problem. I know sometimes the lookup can be an issue. I'll just repeat. Since we are using VLOOKUP, type VLOOKUP, our lookup value is our faculty. So scroll across your data to spot faculty. And this is a faculty here. Um, so comma to our formula. N next parameter is our table array. And next to our data here, there's uh, some data that we want to use as our table array. So I will select that. After selecting that, put a comma. Next is our column index. And since we want to look up our department, our department, our column index for our department is 2. So I write 2. Place another comma. And um, our range lookup, we want to return an exact match. So we click on false. And make sure you have closed the parentheses of our formula and hit enter. So have you been able to do that? Okay. Is there a question? Is there a question? So since there is no, there's not a question, I will ask a question. So we have so very many NAs. I want somebody to unmute their mic and please tell me why we are receiving those NA values. Ronnie, do you have an idea? Anyone with an idea why we are getting some NA error in our data here, in our column? Stella, do you have an idea? 
Exactly. Good. Okay. Yeah, that was very good. You have spotted the error. We have to make our our table array here absolute. And to remind you to do that, um, we have to press F four to include those dollar sign. Press F four again um, to include those dollar sign. Then press enter. Uh, sorry, there my table array is wrong. Let me just repeat that quickly. So our VLOOKUP was is equals VLOOKUP. Our lookup value was our faculty, comma. Our table array was this. Make sure we have included our table array well. Um, place another comma. Our column index is two. And we want to return an exact match. So we'll close that. Enter. And we have to absolute reference this. What is it selecting? Yes, that's what I wanted. We want to absolute reference that. And I will click on F4 to include those dollar sign. And I will click on F4 again to include dollar signs. And our formula has updated down. Are we together, class? So, um, um, that was good, Stella. You can see you are concentrating on yesterday's class. So, in our VLOOKUP, make sure we have anchored our reference to our table arrays. If you will not do that, it will bring some error. I hope that is clear. If you have a question, please unmute your mic and ask a question. So Alvin, Alvin, unmute your mic and ask. You are saying on the attendance you are getting an error. Yeah, I see why you said that. Sorry, I kind of lost a bit. When you type the formula of the test score, mm -hmm. uh, after that you are distracted, distracted by the um, you keep getting an error. So, so I don't know what can be done. Can you look at? Can you please observe uh, the formula bar here and make sure it is exactly the same as, uh, as what you have typed on your side? The if logic was, it is the same. It is exactly the same. Uh, are you in a position to share your screen? Please confirm if you can be able to share screen so that we can help you. Okay, so I'll just I'll just go back, or rather I'll just include another another column here and name it attendance again. So um. Our logic was if make sure you have typed the if statement. The logic test was if the class skipped was less than five comma. Make sure you have placed that comma. If the classes are less than five, we issue out an award. Comma. Otherwise, no award to be issued out. Make sure you have closed down the parentheses and hit enter. And my formula has updated automatically. Alvin, have you been able to do that? Alvin? Okay, thank you. So any anybody else with a question? 
please unmute your mic and ask. You can unmute your mic and ask a question before we proceed. Anybody with an issue with the VLOOKUP function, you can ask so that you can be helped. So I want to show you a trick here. So everyone, I want you to be attentive. So another method that I can, I can use in our VLOOKUP function, rather than just anchoring the table array and adding these dollar signs, because sometimes we can forget. Another method that we can use, we can turn, we can turn our data here to the side to one another Excel table. And when we started our lesson, we discussed about it. So select all our data, then control T to convert this data to a to an Excel table. Make sure you have indicated that your data, your table has headers. And then press OK. We have turned our small data here to, to an Excel table. Has everyone done that? Has everyone done that? I hope so. So the next step, the next step that you want to do is to name this this excel table that you have created here so back to our table design on our extreme left there's a table name we can click on it and we can call our table department department please remember to place an underscore and don't just put our space we'll uh, name our excel table department lookup and press enter now that we have named our excel table are we together up to there if you have a question you can unmute your mic and ask so now since we have uh, named our our small table here we have created we have turned it to an excel table our table array here we can delete that and you can input our table, our Excel table name, and we named it Department Lookup. And I can hit enter, and it still works. Are we together up to there? Repeat for the first step. I will do exactly that. So, Control Z. So, our first step was to turn our small data here to an Excel table. And uh, at the beginning I said, if you want to turn some data to an Excel table, click on it. You want to select all our data, press Control plus A to select all of our data. Then to turn it to our Excel table, press Control T. Make sure you are clicked on the my table as headers and say OK. And now we have turned our table, our table to an Excel table. Are we together up to there? Yes. So the next step is to provide. Is there a question? So the next step yeah. is. OK. So the next step is to provide our small Excel table here a name. So click on the Excel table and on our design tab, click on it. On our extreme left, there's a table name. And we want to name our Excel table department. Department underscore lookup. And then click enter. We have provided our Excel table with the name. So back to our department column. We want to update our VLOOKUP function. So rather than referencing our table array here, because sometimes you might forget uh, to anchor our reference to those dollar signs. 
we can just include the Excel table name. And the name that we provided for Excel table was Department Lookup. Here it is. We click on it and say Enter. And our formula is updated with no errors. A question? A question, please? Raise your hand if you have a question. And if you have understood the concept, a question. Hey, Manuel? Can you repeat the final part where you have had the department look? Okay. I'll just undo my step. Press Ctrl Z on your keyboard. Here. So, we want to replace this table array with our department, with our Excel table name, which is the department lookup. So, just delete it and then add department underscore lookup. Click on it and press OK, and the results are just the same. Are we okay, together? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any other question? You can raise your hand. Okay. So, the last concept I want to introduce to you today is special item specifiers in Excel tables. So, below our department lookup, Excel table. There's a um, row headers here. There's a data, headers, total, and all. Has everybody been able to see that? I hope so. So, if I try to type a formula here in our table, say is equals student grades, uh, place place some square brackets and we have a list of items here has everybody been able to do that so when we scroll down we see there are some items that have started with some hash hash all hash data hash headers and hash totals so that is what we refer to as special items specifiers in Excel tables. Are we together up to there? Are we together? If you have a question, please unmute your mic and ask a question. Yes, ask a question. Is there a question? Eugene is saying pardon. So I'll start. I'll just repeat again. So on our data row here, I want to write is equals and say student grades. And to remember our student grades is our is the name of our Excel table, our main Excel table. If I add some square brackets, we see a list of items being being referenced here and if I just go down 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 we see some some items here that have started with the hash hash all hashtag data hashtag headers and hashtag totals so that is what we refer to as special item specifiers in Excel tables are we together Eugene, are we together? Okay, so let's continue. So I'll just delete that. And I want us to use rows function that will help us to count the number of rows in any referenced array. So again, since I want to use that function, I'll type is equals and say rows. Click on that formula 
and uh, I want to our table array that I want to reference is our student our student grades here so again place those those are uh, square brackets and scroll down and hit on data and make sure you are closed that uh, square bracket and we have closed our main function with some parentheses and hit enter and we see a value 31 being displayed are we together up to there if you have a question please unmute so since we got 31 we want to prove our answer so in our in our main table here in our main excel table we have 31 rows minus our our header we have 31 rows minus our header so that function has fulfilled its purpose is there a question up to there alvo unmute your mic and ask you can unmute your mic and, and ask so is there a question okay let's proceed so if you want to know how many headers we have we can use the columns function and combine it with our special item specifiers so to type in our function is equals and i'll type in columns not column columns so the array that we want to use again is the student is the student grades excel table here so input those square brackets and then go down and click on headers make sure you have closed those square brackets and close the parentheses on our main on our main formula hit enter and we receive 14 and to prove our function, we can count the number of headers that our main Excel table has. And it has 14. If you count, they go up to 14. Is there a question? Are we following up with what we are doing about special item specifiers? Wisdom, are you okay? Said, are you okay? okay? Priska, are you okay? Joseph, is Joseph in attendance? Are you okay, Joseph? Stella, are you okay? Alvo, Derox, Muema? Yeah. Yeah. So let's continue to our final function. So if you wanted to know how many total rows we have, in our excel table again we can use the rows function so put an is equal sign write rows click on it our table array again is the student grades click on it open our square brackets scroll down and select all make sure you have closed down our square brackets and we have put the parentheses in our main formula and then hit enter and the total rows in our main excel table here our student grades is 33 so 1 to 33 uh, as you have seen here they are 1 to 33 so our formula is, is correct any question? Eugene? Eugene Pro? 
Unmute your mic and ask. Eugene Pro. Where do you, where do you want me to to repeat? The tutorials part. Okay. So control plus Z to undo that. Never forget about that. Control plus Z. It's the shortcut for undoing anything that you have done. So equal sign and say rows. Our table array is the student. Is the student grades table. Open the square brackets. Scroll down to all. Click on it. Make sure you have closed your square brackets. And make sure you have closed your main parentheses. And hit enter. And the total rows in our student grades Excel table is 33. As you can see here from number 1 to 33. Those are our total rows. The screen is off. The screen is off. Okay. Um, can you see my screen now? No. Let me stop. And, uh... I can't see your screen. Okay, let me let me correct that. Can you see my screen now? Somebody to unmute their mic and confirm. Yeah. Yes. 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 So sorry for that error. So I'll just undo that and repeat. So to calculate our total rows, so I'll input z equals and type rows. And the array that we want to use is our student grades Excel table. So open the square brackets, scroll down. And select all close our square brackets and make sure you have closed our main parenthesis and hit enter and now we get 33 total rows are we together are we together Emmanuel are you okay Uh, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. So yeah, so that was that for today. So I open the floor for any question. Anyone with a question, clarification, or a comment about today's class, please unmute your mic and say something. Please unmute your mic and say something. If you want a clarification, you can ask. Ronnie, do you have anything to say? Mm -hmm. Have you recorded the class? Yes, the class was recorded. It's, re it's being recorded. Okay. Yeah. Sent to us. Okay, pardon? Yeah. I, I, I will need to up the recording of the class. Oh, did you arrive at uh, the class late today? Yeah. Okay, you will receive the recording of what you have done today. So, don't worry. Okay. So, any other question? Okay, thank you. Welcome. Any other question or comment about today's class? You can please unmute your mic and ask. Question and uh, uh -huh. could you please spell the formula 
data. For the data. Yes. So okay. I'll just write data here and repeat. For the data, start with these equals and type in rows. The array that we want to use is the student grades. Open the square brackets, scroll down and hit on data. Make sure you have closed your square brackets and make sure you have closed the I mean parenthesis two. Hit enter and our the number of rows in our data are that one. Is that clear? Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, another question. Uh, thank you, Casola Collins, for the comment. Is there any other question before we drop the call and end our class? So since there are, there are no more questions, um, let's see you, I'll see you tomorrow so that we can start talking about um, Power Query and we'll build on today's class. So make sure once the class is over, you review what you have done so that tomorrow nobody will have problems. And make sure we have reported to the class as early as 6.20 so that nobody can be left behind so see you tomorrow bye bye yes alvin tomorrow i arrive early um i will share some other data set alvo i'll search for some other data set so that you can practice romney thank you for the comment Riska, thank you. Thank you very much. So let's meet here tomorrow as early as 6.30. Bye everyone and have a good evening.